fantastic evening. Today we have a special treat. It's going to be our NACE Varsity Premiere. It's going to be our Varsity Green roster going up against George Mason University in Rocket League. It is the playoff single elimination tournament bracket, so there's a lot riding on the line. Your whole season has come down to this point, and today we're going to see how it gets started off. I am Daniil, also known as Betterson McGee, joined by the one and the only. Go ahead, my friend. Uh, Theo, known as the Holy Juan, and as you said, we have a exciting matchup, single elimination, so win or go home. Both teams had a really good regular season. The Saints green team did go 7-0. and zero. George Mason University went 5-1 and one, though, so it's going to be an interesting matchup. Still a round of 16, a lot of uh, tournament left for both teams that they can win, but if you lose, you're going home. Yeah, there's so much left to be played, but I think especially with the start, and obviously since the single elimination, every win counts, but even <laughs> the way you win will be super important in terms of your morale and your momentum going forward. Not every game is going to be played on the same day. It's going to still be week after week. But with your previous games in mind from the past, they start to add up. And if you feel like you're barely skating by, especially early on in the tournament, you're not going to fare well in the later rounds. So still, round of 16, every game counts. You want to make sure you're putting your best foot forward, but not too good of a foot forward to give your opponents a chance to start countering your strategies and such. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is the point in time it's, been, it's the playoffs. Regular season has finished. As a team, you should be all ready and prepared and mm -hmm. all guns blazing 100%. Should be playing your best best game at this time. Obviously, now would be a wor the worst possible time to kind of slump as a team. But from the look of things, our Saints Green team is not looking to slow down anytime soon. I think their only reasonable outcome of this tournament is them winning it. So anything less than that, they'll definitely be unhappy. So I'm definitely expecting a strong performance. Yeah, so. absolutely. And even just talking to the team, they're definitely expecting not only to do well, but they, they are favored and expect to kind of win the entire NACE season. They're definitely in one of the teams on everybody's list in terms of top performers, um, but they've definitely had, I don't want to say a rough season, but one with plenty of ups and downs. Um, really strong, talented players on this team, and they performed very well, but some may say they haven't performed as well as expected. So, especially with you know, arguably the uh, the highest standard of esports in the collegiate scene, the NACE Varsity Premier League. They definitely want to show up, show their best, and uh, really make a statement with their performance today and for the rest of the season. Yeah, even with their ups and downs, still they remain flawless for the season. So they have found time and time again to win. It's going to be a best of five today. So first to three is going to be victorious. And you know, they they have had matches where they've dropped uh, games they maybe shouldn't have. But today on the big stage, I don't think we're going to see any of that happening. If the Saints can come out of the gates a really strong play, a very, very solid first game, they will put all on the all of the pressure onto George Mason University, and if they can get off to a very good start today, I think they will be very happy with that. Yeah, and even just looking into what separates the team from some of the others, calling back to one of the earlier interviews we did with some of the players, just thinking about what their play style does and how it allows them to exceed. The way they play, they're super aerial focused, and I think that allows them to play a unique style of offense they are continually suppressing these, the clears that the opponent team try to make with those aerial clears. They're intercepting and they're blocking as well as taking shots continually. It just allows repeated offense as well as strong defense because instead of waiting for the ball to hit the ground and playing from there, you're getting there early before most teams even have a chance to start like formulating their strategy and executing their plan. So I think the way that this team plays is very conducive to dominant performances. Of course, if another team is also really strong in the aerial department, then you might start to see some troubles going forward. Yeah, I think a uh, main point of emphasis for the Saints today was to is to play with as least mistakes as mm -hmm. possible. Uh, you don't want to be allowing any easy goals kind of from the enemy team's half where you can kind of overcommit. There's an open net and the ball goes in. But we're going to be going straight into game one. George Mason University against St. Clair College is going to be titanium dev a and Janum for the side of George Mason Saints. Gonna have Fab, so Jazzy and Shuffleverse. Yeah, Shuffleverse is going to be stepping up for the team today, playing in the stead of PZY. And now, oh, this game starting up a nice shot straight towards the blue net. James gonna get that great critical save. Saints found that one early, would have been huge, but now Shuffleverse chasing this one into the corner, taking that to the ground, but he's not gonna win that 50. That exchange is gonna go the way of George Mason University. Jazzy doing his best, finding that one in the air. Gonna get crossed over, 
and Fobzo is going to be able to guess that through. Taking it right back over to Orange side. These two are they're chasing the ball. Titanium's gonna meet that in the corner. Intercepted once again. Jazzy hungry for the ball. His teammate Shuffleverse gonna get the clear. A good start from both teams so far. No goals just yet him into the game. Now it's gonna be Fabso on the attack. Doesn't seem like there's a defender nearby. He went for the pass oh. instead of the shot, and it's not gonna pay off for the Saints, but it's a promising start. Definitely an opportunity for a goal there as they continue to press forward. Titanium drops it off right for the net. It's gonna give the Saints an easy shot. Jazzy just gonna swoop in there, tap that one in. That's kind of a Christmas gift coming out there from Titanium. Not too sure what he was thinking, but Jazzy is gonna be very happy with the outcome of that Saints. It's gonna take an early lead as they lead one to zero. Yeah, off the back of a slightly off the mark, mark initial shot, the Saints were able to convert that into a beautiful shot into the net. Now, I feel like with the amount of shots that were coming out for the Saints, uh, they should have had a more than one goal there, but they were able to find one, and I think this bodes well for their offensive going forward. But George Mason University really hasn't even had a chance to start their own offense. They've been the back against the wall this entire series jazzy lining up for another shot for his teammate shuffleverse in the area but not going to go for it playing patient and he's going to get this clear ch uh, chasing that one out jazzy bouncing that one towards the ground allowing his teammates to try to play for possession waiting forward shuffleverse taking that to the corner and they're still fighting for control in front of orange net fob though finally going to bounce that one out clear it out dev going to be returning that to the sender with Titanium, as well as a teammate Dev chasing this one towards Orange side. They want to maintain the pressure. They want to replicate what the Saints have been doing to them, but it seems like the Saints are already taking this back to blue side. Yeah, and it's going to be them on the attack. A nice little defensive they play there from Jane. I'm going to slow that one down, but Shuffleverse is going to look to pass it right in front of the net. It might have dropped in for the Saints. Again, didn't have a player at that back post to have the finish there. And Saints can look to Risa Jazzy looking for a pass towards a team but Janum is going to be there with the clear and shuffleover is going to pass it into the middle. No follow up from the side of the Saints. Fab, so nobody inside oh, that net. That should be an easy goal yet again for Jazzy. Just drops in and he's in the right place at the right time yet again. Bit of a defensive maps, lapse from wow. George Mason. As St. Clair have had a very good game so far, are going to be up 2-0. to zero. Gotta love the style points on that one. So you took that shot upside down, riding into the net on his roof. And I think uh, I think those little decisions matter a lot. Oh. Jazzy trying to get another goal in the series. Shuffleverse going to follow off of his own shot. Not going to find the mark, but Jazzy <laughs> off the rebound from the post, bouncing it in. Was he the one that got all three yeah. goals? Yeah, it's a hat trick for Jazzy in game one. Two minutes to spare. George Mason University. It's uh, it'd be an understatement to say that they're struggling. They are definitely having a hard time. Yeah, I mean, Jazzy has just stood in front of the net three times and waited for the ball to <laughs> drop in, and it's happened every single time. As you said, Saints just finding all everything they need to find to take this game. They're up 3-0. They're continuously attacking. George Mason going to look for a goal across the field, but nothing going to come through there. And you can see how quickly Saints collapse on the defense. They make sure no second chance opportunities come through. Fabso going to clear that one up. Going to bounce back right back to Fabso. No shot on target just yet. Saints with only a minute 40. Don't need to keep the aggression on. They can just try and stall out this clock a bit, but I'm sure they're going to push for another shuffle verse. Gets a nice touch into the corner and Fabso going to start the attack for the Saints. A demo comes out on the shuffle verse, so it should slow things down for the side of the Saints as George Mason going to look to take over. If they can find a goal, they can build some momentum for the next game, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. The clearance come through. Fabso whiffs on that one. Jazzy is there for the follow-up. Nice defense, though, from Dev still. Fabso gets it back into the middle. Shuffle verse going to get another touch in there, and Jazzy, wow. fourth goal of the game. Yet again, it just drops in front of the net. Jazzy has such good instinct here. Is able to be at the right place at the right time. Yet again, I feel like a broken record, but with four goals in this game, this has been a recipe for success for the Saints. Yeah, I'm starting to see through the matrix a little bit of what makes this team tick. Their defense is so active compared to most other teams. Their defense being passive, waiting for the ball to come towards them. The Saints will chase the ball down and make something happen. I think that's how they're able to find a lot of these shot opportunities that they're taking. And uh, I obviously, with the scoreline they have right now, you can, it's 
spelling success with just 50 seconds left in this game one george mason university if they could at least find oh. some kind of success and they're, pl they're playing it slow and it almost worked out in their favor uh one of the teammates there just getting a little excited and kind of blowing it early but now 35 for george mason to at least find one on the board but the saints already have it in blue side fob so slow as she goes low oh. while in gonna get bumped down i think they're finally utilizing the physics system of this game to their advantage george mason university getting aggressive against the saints players not allowing them to just camp out the net and do whatever they'd like meeting them aerial uh that guy said that could be the key to stopping the saints offense it's not quite gonna go their way it's still gonna end up in orange side 10 seconds left in this game george mason university not gonna find any success but at the very least uh again hopefully they can take what happened in game one and turned out oh wow finding a goal just at the last couple of seconds that one kind of just bounced in found its way don't think the saints were really paying too much attention to it but a score to score and i mean it's yeah. gonna take us to game two yeah i mean it's something george mason get a bit of something on the board <laughs> just proving they can put the ball in the back of the net but yeah, as you said a very nice start for seeing clear gonna take the ga game one with a 4-1 scoreline both teams gonna keep this one up for a little bit so we're gonna look for a bit of heroics here from look at things but as soon as this one touches down that will be the game is still being kept up no teams want to go to game two from the look of things they want to play this one, game one for a while but finally it's gonna touch down jazzy with four goals definitely the standout player there for the saints and a big reason to why they were able to score so many goals but the team just looked like they were gelling so well together they take a 4-1 lead in that game and they take the series one to zero yeah, and I think one thing I was saying before is the Saints' defense is very active, and I think that plays into a huge role for why they're finding so much success on the offense. Instead of waiting back for the ball towards uh, to come towards them, using their, I guess, superior game sense, they really are chasing the ball and playing much closer towards um, the opponent's side of the field. Watching Jazzy just camping on the sides uh, near the roof and uh, obviously camping out the boosters as well, he's able able to just wait for the ball to start coming towards midfield and using his game sense he's able to judge whether or not he should keep his position or try to intercept and go for an offensive play or just go straight back to the net try to make some kind of rotation play with this team um, obviously all three of the teammates there are capable of doing such plays and all of them continually doing that is what allows them to maintain such a strong offensive pressure whereas most other teams I've noticed it's more of a turn taking uh, plan that one person will go up on the offense and then someone else will fill that space but um, with the Saints it feels like it's all three constantly fluctuating between offense and defense and uh, just using their game sense to make sure that they don't overcommit and don't undercommit and miss opportunities that would allow them to find a very easy goal. Yeah absolutely and you know George Mason on the flip side getting the wrath of the Saints I think one thing they can uh, do is not let Saints get two three uh, chances on the shot on the initial shot just try and clear it out to safety instead it mm -hmm. kept bouncing back in front of the net and there was just nothing they could do didn't have numbers but with all that being said we're gonna throw it to a very short break i believe so we're gonna be back with game two as i think there was some service maintenance We told you the break would be short, ladies and gentlemen. That maintenance kind of went by faster than we expected. The players already back in this game to St. Clair College versus George Mason University. And let's see if we can repeat history. That game one was utterly dominant for the Saints, four to one. Uh, that last one was really a last second goal from George Mason University. But 
again. It's a new game, new life. Let's see, uh, let's see what we can get done on either of these teams. Yeah, let's see if George Mason can maybe come out of the gates swinging. They do have the last goal in the series. I mean, that is, is something here, but Saints yet again looking to push on the offensive and somehow Fabso is wide open under the net. Jazzy with a beautiful pass off the back there and George Mason just have nobody defending their goal. You could definitely see the Saints have got the ball rolling and they're not looking to slow down anytime soon. I really empathize with George Mason there. That's one of those shots where it's like you, you wouldn't really have any reason to expect that to turn into a shot. Um, they were chasing the ball up the left corner and so ricocheted off the ceiling down towards the net. Very unconventional, at least something I don't see very often and uh, I don't blame George Mason for not being prepared for that one. Uh, but in any case, that's going to be the first one for the Saints in this game too. Four minutes remaining for either of these teams to really get cooking for these shots. Fabzo chasing this one to right side. Going to get intercepted. Titanium looking to go. Oh. Strong statement. Almost getting it in. Fabzo coming out of nowhere. Clearing that one out. A goal not happening today. Jazzy carrying that one all the way from orange side into the net. I want to see that one. Beautiful. Look at that. Literally just right off of the clear. That was straight from Fabzo's bumper all the way to blue side. George Mason University down two points now in game two. And you can see how quickly the Saints break on the attack from a beautiful save to a beautiful solo goal, as you said. Now double their lead, and George Mason just seemed to be falling apart a little bit. Jazzy going to try to find another one, and that's very risky defense from George Mason, but they do get it through, which allows them to start a counterattack off their own. They sent two members on the near post. Oh! Careful there, right in front of the net. JM looked for the goal. Jazzy is there with the save, and you can see when things get down and dirty, right in front of the Saints net, they're able to find these crucial, crucial saves, and they are going to be able to clear the danger. That was a golden opportunity for George Mason. Now it's going to be Saints looking to capitalize on the other end. Yeah, we could see. I feel like most other teams that would have ended up being a goal against them, but the Saints, I guess it's the communication really on top there. No one really made any plays that could have turned that into a goal for George Mason University. And even though there might have been a little bit of hesitance and that ball was in front of the net a lot longer than anyone would oh. have felt comfortable. Ooh, it. Ultimately didn't turn to a goal, but with that shot coming up from Jazzy, shuffle verse with the rebound, taking that straight to a 3-0. Look at that shot. He's rolling it forward. It's going to get Save, but shelf reverse right where you need to be. Again, the game sense from the Saints, they are always into positions, covering all the angles that they know would need to be covered in order to make the most out of all these opportunities. And you can't afford to keep things predictable if you're playing against the Saints green team here. Shuffleverse on the ground. He's going to recognize this ball is not his. Going to yield that towards Jazzy, who's going to turn this into a successful clear. As long as things keep going his way, he's going to get intercepted now. And that, thankfully, Fabzo able to stop that one from getting into a scary position. Shuffleverse taking this from center field to blue side in the corner. Fabzo on the ground, ready to turn this into a shot. Dev, ready for that save. And now we're going to see Jazzy trying to turn this into something even more beautiful, carrying it straight to the ground. Titanium stopping him right where he was. Shuffleverse keeping this in the corner, popping it into the air. Dame is going to find that, send it flying. Dev chasing this down. Shuffleverse on the ground. Oh my. Right off the crossbar. Jazzy ready to sweep that out. I mean, Saints are playing a risky game on defense, but George Mason just cannot capitalize right as I say that, though. Finally, it's going to be George Mason breaking through. I feel like they definitely deserve at least one goal in this game from the chances they've had. And I feel like St. Clair is just giving them a little bit too much on the uh, defensive end. But for side of St. Clair, they're still up 3-1. They're still cruising. Only two minutes left in this game. I think they're going to be pushing for more goals here as they get the ball in enemy territory, Fab. So going to look for something on this attack. Not going to be able to find too much. It's going to be George Mason back in control, but St. Clair still fighting for Titanium. Going to be first to the ball. Gets a nice little pinch there towards the middle. Shuffleverse will be up in the air to grab it first. Gets it by Titanium. Going to look for a pass now towards a teammate. Nice defense from Dev, keeping that one away from Danger. But now it's right in front of the net of George Mason. A safe four style from Jame as St. Clair are putting on the pressure. And that's why having a good game could kind of be a double-edged sword at times. Saints playing so well offensively. Kind of like, oh. oh, wow. Speaking of strong offense, Shuffleverse off of a pass from his teammate on the blue net. He wasn't near the blue net. He was on the blue net and pass it back. And that's going to turn into a shot, which turns into a goal. Four to one now for St. Clair College. But 
<laughs> I guess that goes to prove my point. The Saints were having such a strong offense that they might have neglected their defense a little bit, at least long enough for George Mason University to find one goal. But I was going to say that was a... Uh, that might be a strong start oh. for, oh wow, Fabzo taking this one slow, thankfully slow enough that this team, or the George Mason University is going to be able to sweep that ball away. Would have been 5-1 now, things went a little differently for the Saints. Titanium, the rest of George Mason University fighting desperately, getting the demo on Jazzy, oh. turning this into a nice a classic slow and easy shot, nothing complicated. Go for the demo, go for the ball. That's all you need to accomplish in this game. But like I said, they're finding goals and they're not accidents, they're not mistakes. These are planned, coordinated, well done. And you always want to see that, especially when the team you're playing against is obviously favorite to beat you. So it means you can make them bleed. And if you just tighten up things here and there, you're able to find a lot of success. Yeah, I mean, Saints, I think, playing a bit reckless on the defense is just now. It's going to turn into a 4-3 game. And now it's starting to heat up. Saints still definitely in control, but nobody there to contest that shot it's a free free goal again and I mean St. Clair they have to be careful here we're up 4-1 as well and now it's only 4-3 45 seconds and counting Jazzy gonna be the first to the ball now it's crunch time now St. Clair really need to show why they are the favorite team and close out this game otherwise George Mason could be back in this series and it's gonna be shuffle verse on the attack gonna look to pass it just fakes it out as Saints not gonna get a good shot on target there a big, big save needed though. Here, Dev gonna be the first to the ball. Fab, so gonna be there. Nice demo from Jazzy, but it's gonna be George Mason with a bit of an opportunity. Jazzy though, will find an easy clearance. Tries to get that one away. It is touched, but Shuffleverse gets a shot on target. There's a good deflection from Dev, but with 12 seconds and taking, it's gonna be George Mason who needs to get on the attacking side. St. Clair have just been able to hold the ball here. And with the clock ticking down, next time it touches down, that should be the game. One final opportunity for George Mason University. University Jazzy should just let this one drop. It's actually going to be Titanium keeping this one in the air for the time being. And this instance, the ball being up matters a lot. There's going to be a shot on target. Wow. Cleared right off of the line. So close to tying it up. But it's going to be St. Clair with a good second game win. Yes, it did get a little bit nerve-wracking there towards the end. But they were able to close it out after a great team performance. Yeah, if I were the Saints, I would definitely would not be counting George Mason out of yeah. this series with it play like that it shows they still have a lot in the tank and uh, with the amount they have left in the tank I think they can make a lot of scary decisions a lot of scary plays that was so, so close. close to taking us to an overtime I'm a little shocked that we're not in one <laughs> yeah. uh, as we head into game three now which is again not an overtime from the previous game despite what it may have looked like in those last few seconds shelf first immediately starting strong with two demos in a row maybe a little revenge for those last few plays George Mason went very demo heavy in that last game and uh, as we get things kicked off 15 seconds in and the Saints are already on the back foot but immediately switching to the front foot as we're black on blue side and Jazzy getting a nice stuff on the clear shot first missing that shot forward Fabzo carrying it back oh, this is a double attack. Commit. two more and he finds that roll straight in with 30 seconds into this game three St. McCall is doing really well so far I'm not sure how the Saints got a three on one on that counter attack but I was going to say it's a good start to the third game for George Mason, but they kind of fall apart early. And now Saints hit again, able to take an early lead. I mean, this has been so key to every game. They have control, and they can control how the oh, game goes. Wow. And there's a very easy second goal. St. Clair have really ramped it up, and you can definitely see George Mason kind of falling apart. They gave themselves a chance in that second game. But in this game, in the first 40 seconds, they already gave up two goals. It's going to be hard to come back from this one. I feel like Saints definitely making a statement right now with how they're playing this game three, just taking these shots, making it look easy. Of course, it's far from easy in this game. George Mason University. Oh, another one. As much. Another beautiful execution from the Saints. Three-man commit, Jazzy, now turning this into a little bit of a sloppy defense, hoping not to have this turn into a shot. But Saints, just by a hair's breath, able to convert this into a clear. George Mason University looking to reset things, taking it all the way back to orange, tipping this one up, slowing oh. it up for his team to go for the oh, shot. Goal. Dev finding it, shoving it straight to the back of the net. And Mason finding one on the board. They do find one. Let's see what happened here. Titanium with a crucial touch. And it's Dev with a nice finish. Shuffle versus unfortunately getting under that one. Puts in the top of the net. And I mean, just like that, George Mason 
have control uh, kind of back in their favor. Still, they are down 2-1. A lot of work to uh, to do here. But St. Clair, they have shown that they can crack here and there. Goals can come out. And another dangerous shot on target. Jazzy will find a big, big save there to keep the Saints in the lead now. Still, it's going to be Saints on the attack now. Jazzy gets a run from the net. Wow. Is anyone there for the follow-up? It's going to be Jazzy on his own rebound. <laughs> Cannot find the goal. I think Saints rotations might have been a bit off there. And it might lead to a counter attack here for George and Mason. It's a nice opportunity. Titanium definitely had a chance. That goal there didn't find the best angle though. Saints still ahead 2-1 pushing for a third. Jazzy taking this all the way to blue side. Finally going to get stopped but it was a little bit of a half-hearted stop. Maybe not as forceful as George Mason wanted but at least they're able to convert this into an offense but not before Saints take it back to an offense of their own. Jazzy in the fight in the corner. Going to get that sent back over to the opposite corner as they try to clear on the side of George Mason University. Shuffleverse meeting what he sent over here. Jazzy playing just a little bit further back to stop them from taking it to Orange. And he's going to be stuck oh. in the net as they go for a shot. Shuffleverse oh. meeting him there. Not going to be able to find the touch. And that leaves the ball bouncing off the crossbar. Jazzy on the crossbar oh, that's himself. A leaps off. And what? Shoots it right away. But his teammate was just off the mark a little bit. Not going to be able to turn that into a shot. Jazzy now going for his own hero play. Shuffleverse in the air. It's Bobzo meeting him there too. Looks like they're all trying to get a shot on the board, but might not have had the communication there. Bobzo getting demoed, but that's going to find a posthumous score as he goes down. It's still finding the ball in the net. Look at that. Shooting that one gets demoed. The explosion might have actually helped a little bit with the speed. Who knows? But with just two minutes, 20 seconds left in this game. St. Clair College leading now by two points. Yeah, I mean, they take a bit of a comfortable lead here, but, I mean, they have not looked so, so sharp here in this third game. A couple of mistakes here and there that George Mason have looked to capitalize on, as now it's going to be in Saints territory, but Jazzy finds a clear. It's a beautiful pass to Shuffleverse. Back to Jazzy. All members Ooh. on hand looking for this goal, but nice save from JM under pressure. Able to keep it alive. It's now George Mason. I mean, they need a goal and they need one badly if they want any chance of coming back into this one. Saints just is staying strong here. Jazzy gets in front of the net, takes it to the side, makes sure no shots can come through. Titanium had a good angle there, good chance to get a solid shot on target, but it just did not go off for George Mason University. Is now the clearance is going to come out, and the longer this clock ticks, the least, the less the chances for George Mason become to win. Yeah, and uh, like you said, seconds taken by each one feeling like an eternity for George Mason University, but unfortunately for them, it isn't an eternity, which might be how long it might take for them to find another shot, the way things are going, but Dev looking to prove me wrong, going for a beautiful shot, but Jazzy with an excellent save. Now things are midfield, not where you want to be on the side of blue, but they still have to find a way not only to find more goals, but to prevent the Saints from doing so at the same time. It's not going to be that easy as the Saints are already mounting a very strong offense. Thankfully, George Mason is going to be able to clear this one out. Dev in the pocket, fighting for the ball, oh. but it gets launched out. Fabzo, thankfully, was in position to get the save. Again, the game sense really strong. The Saints very rarely when you find them out of position, that's but that's a shot coming out from Dev. That one, I don't know how they saved the other one, but they weren't able to save that one. Saints letting one slip by. Things are two to three, 38 left on the clock not possible far from it i mean there were two players on the side of george mason university for some reason from the saints not too sure why they were there but 30 seconds and counting i mean saints have made a lot of mistakes i have to say allowing george mason to get some easy easy goals but with 30 seconds left it looks like they want to wrap things up beautiful team play there wow. doesn't go in though right off the post so it's going to be George Mason with one final opportunity here to find the goal they need to bring this one to overtime. Fabso looks to pass it over to Jazzy. All three members stacked on top of one another. It's a trick play coming up for them from the look of things. Ten seconds and ticking. One shot on target. Going to come through from Jazzy. Won't find it. Deb will get contested. Fabso finds a crucial touch. Three seconds, two seconds. As soon as this ball touches down, that is going to be the game. Titanium keeps it up. Let's see if anyone from the blue team can get the ball in. The oh, net. my God. He is zero. Second goal coming out from Titanium. Ties the game up at three and gives George Mason a chance in the series. Not once, but twice in a row at the end of the game. George Mason take things 
almost to an overtime in the last one, but this time they find the goal, taking it to an overtime in this game three. You very rarely do teams feel like they get a second chance at life, but here it is, George Mason. All they have to do is find oh. one more to survive in the series, and they almost find it right away. We're 13 seconds in right now. The offense is not relented on the side of George Mason University. It's looking like a complete opposite as things were from the start of the series. Fobzo looking to end things out strong right now. It's going to bounce down to the ground, but nobody was ready for the, the, on the side of the Saints to take that shot. We're going to see them pass things up. Center field is going to be slowly drifting back over to blue side. A nice clear. Can I keep it in disguise? Fobzo passing down to Jazzy. He's actually going to get cleared out of the way. Maybe they're looking for a different kind of play that they wanted to go for, but wasn't going to be able to get executed. Shuffle first, slowly carrying that one towards the field. But now Jazzy meets in the air, slowing things down, setting up for a good play. Oh. Passing it right over the roof of George Mason University, but not able to send that one straight in. Shuffleverse riding around as his teammate goes for the shot. Fabzo going to miss just off the mark a little bit, but Jazzy now and Shuffleverse on the defense. George Mason with the counterattack. Yeah, they look to counterattack, have an opportunity, but now Saints have locked in defensively. You can see they have two or three members in the net at all times. At this point, they do not want to allow another goal to go through and go to a game four with George Mason having the momentum. And George Mason has definitely picked their game up. I mean, they're not giving the Saints any room to work with from the look of things. The Saints are pushing and pushing on this attack, but the defense seems like there's always a defender there when needed. Now we're a minute 30 into this overtime. The longer this goes, the higher the chance for somebody to finish it off. Shuffleverse going to be flying through the air. Doesn't find anything. Jazzy's going to be up in the air now. Looking for a pass towards the middle. It drops in between all the players there, so it's going to be Fabso trying to find the 50, but it's going to be flying towards the Saints net. It's going to be Shuffleverse back in time to find the Saints but neither team able to find a breakthrough in this overtime. We're already two minutes through this one. Yeah, and now as the Saints just, oh, he missed the clear. Thankfully for him, didn't turn into a shot from George Mason University. I don't think they were expecting to miss themselves. But now as the ball slowly hits the ground near midfield, James fighting to keep this back on orange side. And he's going to succeed, but unfortunately, Saints going to get another clear, keeping it back still. James chasing this one forward, shuffle first right underneath him. Going to shoot the ball right from underneath his wheels. Jazzy taking this straight over to blue side. Solo play. Teammates now ready for the assist. Fabzo meeting the ball midair. Not going to find a shuffle verse. Now force play on the defense. Going to get the demo instead as Jazzy prevents the ball from flying towards their net. Getting the second save of that exchange as a shot was ringing through from oh. the University. There's no net. open net from oh. center field. Jazzy runs it down. Sends it into the net. Two minutes, 39 seconds yes. into this overtime. Almost half. Well, exactly half of a <laughs> second game or fourth game if it were to go to it. Uh, St. Clair College winning things out 3-0 over George Mason University. I'd say save for the uh, first game. Uh, the last two definitely weren't as uh, un or uh, as, as easy for the Saints as we might have expected things to be. Yeah, I mean, the longer the series went, the more life George Mason had. Just a bit of a misstep from mm -hmm. one of their players and one mistake is all the Saints need to wrap up the series, but a good victory for them. I feel like they looked really strong. I feel like they did play with their food a little bit. Like, when they're maybe, up big, maybe. they should really put the pedal to the metal, but it does not matter in the end. They take the series 3-0, and they will be moving on. George Mason's going to be knocked out. Yeah, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully their heads are held high. They put on a really beautiful Beautiful display of Rocket League. Yeah. I feel like very few people have as much fight in them as they showed in yeah. that one game alone, and I'm Both sure they have plenty more left in them. So, fantastic display indeed from George Mason University, and of course, fantastic display from the Saints as well. Going to be advancing on in the NACE Varsity Plus or Varsity Premier uh, Rocket League season. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap things up tonight. I hope you join us for tomorrow. We have League of Legends and Overwatch playoffs as well, and we have have to of course thank our wonderful sponsors who make this show possible. It's going to be Alienware, Tim Hortons, Subway, St. Clair College, SRC, and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. Thank you to everybody in the back, Matthias and Amanda, and thank you of course Theo, as always, for being your fantastic co-host. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us today, and we hope you have a fantastic evening.